everybody out and to be able to, to gather together uh, to worship the Lord this morning. Uh, this is a few announcements as we get started. Uh, as always on the back of your bulletin, uh, there's an area where if you have a prayer request, you can write your prayer request in that area, uh, tear that off the bulletin, drop that in the offering plate. Uh, the same if you're a visitor, if you want to leave us your information and drop it in the offering plate when it gets passed around. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, just a few other announcements here. Uh, keep the card ministry on your mind. Uh, this month is for Iris, so you get her a card or a card dropping up the, uh, the connect wall. Um, they're also still looking for donations for various things, for the Good Samaritan, the DAV, Children's Home Society, the Humane Society. Uh, all that's in your bulletin, and those do donations can be left at the connect wall as well. Uh, the yard sale is coming up, so if you have donations, uh, let those committee chairs know. 
um, get those items to the church. They'll come and pick them up as well. Um, so that's coming up here very soon as well. Um, there are some small groups that are happening. If you want to get involved in a small group, definitely plug in. Uh, youth this evening, we're going to cancel youth so that the kids can hang out with family. Uh, for those, any of those dinners or things that people may have this evening. Um, there are also lots of pastries out at the cafe. Uh, they're going to have some to-go containers at the end of service. If you want to take any of those items, uh, there'll be a container. Fill it up. Uh, we'll clean those out at the end of service. Um, so we also have some opportunities uh, with VBS coming up. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Carrie. You guys may have seen that she carried this giant sign up here. You may wonder what it's all about. So I'm going to let her talk a little bit about it. Thanks, Austin. Happy Mother's Day. It's looking out. It's so nice to see everybody. I see visitors, uh, a lot of you that are here with your moms. That's fantastic. So I know Austin already welcomed you, but um, just glad to have you with us today. Um, if you would make sure that you fill out the information in your bulletin. 
for the visitor section or prayer section if you have prayer needs. And let us know that you were here. We'd appreciate it. So um, as I was watching Carrie, and I saw all of you laugh, laughing at her um, over dates and being confused and going 100 miles an hour, is that like every mom here, right? That's what they do. They're do they do everything. And so as I was watching, I thought, how perfect is that, you know, She's uh, taking care of uh, helping Austin with Bible school and uh, working in the church. And we got graduation coming up, graduation parties. My house is the cleanest it's been in five years. Um, so, and, and the beauty is when I, my kids are old enough now that, that they do Mother's Day. I don't feel a lot of pressure um, other than just making sure the first thing she hears on Mother's Day is, Happy Mother's Day, I love you, thank you. But I asked her what she wanted for Mother's Day, and she said, please just leave me alone. <laughs> am, I, am I lying? <laughs> so I think I'm going to take the doors off the Jeep and leave her alone. Finally, a gift I can afford? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So we want to take just a couple minutes, and we want to recognize, as we do every year, I'm going to ask Carolyn Molodek to make her way up. Um, I'm not, unless you would like to speak, I know you like to talk. We, <laughs> we had this whole conversation before, that's all right. We had this whole conversation before church about how uh, I, I talk a lot. It's part of my job, actually, but that every report card I ever had said I was prepared for ministry. That's, that's not exactly how it was worded, but nonetheless. So today we want to recognize first, this first category always makes me nervous because they always give it to me as the oldest mother, and I know that's really a dangerous way. So we're going to say um, the, the most uh, seasoned and wise mother so I'm going to ask if we have any moms here today that are over 90. Let's just start right there. Over 90, I see a hand. Miss, Mrs. Williams, will you stand up? Betty, yep. Anybody else? Are you able to stand up, dear? Thank you. Betty, I know there's nobody we love more, both of us, than I'm a Jean Bailey, but we're so glad that she wasn't here today and somebody else could win the award. <laughs> but I say that jokingly and lovingly. I know she's at home recovering, so congratulations, Betty. Also, I uh, want to recognize the mother with the youngest child. So, I'm not sure where to start. Um, under a year. Oh, is it just unanimous? Everybody's pointing at Hannah and Ryan. How old? Four months. Anybody younger than four months? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Hannah. All right. <laughs> Hannah and Ryan, hot. Glad to have them here with us today. Okay, and then my favorite one is the mother with the most children. So let's start at more than five. Five or more? Anybody with five? I know we got one. That's why I started there. Is that, that's the winner? All right, Carrie. I got you some flowers for Mother's Day. <laughs> Which Okay. And since we didn't have a tie, we are gonna we are gonna give the extra one to Ama Jean. With Fantastic. Congrats. Let's give a hand to all our moms. Thank you, Kevin. And now I'll ask Dale to lead congregational singing, brother. Good morning. 
ask you to stand and join me in singing our first hymn, Standing on the Promises.
Before you sit down, go ahead and take a minute of fellowship and greet each other. Uh, find somebody who's visiting and tell them you're glad to see them. Yes, sir. Okay, as everybody's making their way back to their seats, oh, I love our moment of fellowship. It's really an hour of fellowship, right? If we're going to do it correctly. A couple of things as we shift toward an attitude of prayer this morning. Obviously, it's Mother's Day, and it's our focus, and, and I want to spend a moment there. And, um, it's it's uh, it's almost cliche, but but uh, you know if you if you want to talk about Mother's Day, you are required in ministry or in service to reference Proverbs 31. It's just where you go, and uh, and we we looked high and low. There's lots of great verses that talk about moms. You know, I personally, and I don't want to get off topic. I, I love uh, First Samuel and Hannah. I just think that's one of the greatest stories of motherhood that exists. But it's Mother's Day, so I'm required to talk about Proverbs 31. So I thought what I would do is, first of all, we all, I don't know that we all know, but most of us know that Proverbs was written by Solomon, right? These little tidbits of wisdom, and that's what he was known for. But not all of the Proverbs were written by Solomon, okay? And in particular, chapter 31 was not written by Solomon. It was written by King Lemuel or Lemuel. And we don't know anything about him other than this uh, Proverbs 31 that he wrote. Obviously, we know he was a king. And if you read the whole uh, chapter, you'll know that his mother gave him some very wise and specific instructions about how to find the perfect woman. And now, that's how we also know Solomon didn't write this chapter, right? All right. That's some, that's some Bible jokes if, if you can look them up later. Solomon had like 700 wives, okay? All right. So, we've got 
this incredible list of characteristics and, and bits of wisdom about how to find you know, the perfect mate, the perfect wife, the perfect woman. Um, and, and it continues in verse 10 with instructions about this virtuous wife. It actually asks, who can find a virtuous wife? Which is a clear indication that when you find one, it's special. It's not meant in a negative way. It's just meant that finding virtuous people is a challenge. We know that. That's why God had to come and be with us. But these instructions conclude with the attributes of motherhood specifically. All the way at the end of the chapter, we read in verses 28 and 29, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also. Did you hear that, guys? Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. It goes on to say that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. It's incredible scripture and wisdom. I hope and pray, and as I've talked to you and I've gotten to know so many of you so well, um, I hope and pray that, that you were blessed to be raised and loved by the kind of mother, the kind of woman that King Lemuel is writing about here. Um, the kind of mother, one who, one who loved God, and you kind of knew she loved God more than she loved you because she was willing to discipline you and do the things that you needed to be done, even, even though you were confused about it. Um, I hope that every mother here that's present or listening online this morning is not only um, this kind of woman and this kind of mother, but also knows that um, indeed, that indeed her children rise up and call her blessed. So as we're honoring moms and focusing on them, I want to also consider every other prayer need that might be on your hearts this morning. I know that there are many. I attended a couple of funerals this week. Um, so I know there are families dealing with loss that are hurting and need our prayer. There's a lot of prayer concerns in your bulletin. And I encourage you not only to pray without ceasing over those. Pick up the phone. Shoot them a text. Let Do something else besides just praying, which is important. Let them know that you're thinking of them uh, and that let God use you in that way, okay, to minister to them in their time of need. Our God is an awesome God, amen? Amen. amen. He is in control. Be still. Let's know that he's God. Humbly submit. It says cast your cares upon him. He cares for us. God loves you. Let's pray. Lord, I pray this Mother's Day prayer for you to thank you, to thank the Lord above, Lord, for blessing me with a lifetime of tender-hearted love. I thank God for the caring you showed me through the years, for the closeness we enjoyed in times of laughter and of tears. And so I thank you from the heart for all you did for me, and I thank the Lord for giving me the best mom there could be. Lord, we pray this morning in gratitude for our mothers, those that are here, and those that are with you. We pray for brand new moms, for single moms, for all those extra moms, Lord, that you put in our lives that helped in so many ways to raise us outside our homes. Lord, for every woman who's joined together with you in the miracle of bringing new life into this world for nurturing and raising us in love. Lord, you give every mother the courage that they need to face uncertainty, an uncertain future, Lord, that life with children just brings the craziness and the insanity, the lack of sleep. So, Lord, give them strength to live and to be loved in return, not perfectly, but humanly. 
Lord, give them every ounce of faithful support from a husband and a family and friends as they care for our physical and spiritual growth. Lord, give them the joy and the delight that comes from their children. Give them enough, Lord, to sustain them through all the trials and challenges of being a mom. They never end. They never quit parenting. They never quit being a mom. Mom, most of all, give them, most of all, give them the wisdom, Lord, to always seek you, to always turn to you in the moments they need help the most. Lord, we lift them up to you. We lift every other concern up to you, those that have been spoken and mentioned and those that have not. Lord, you are God. We love you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm going to ask my ushers to come forward at this time and we're going to do the offering prayer first. So if you guys would come down front right now, I'd appreciate it. I'm going to pray over the offering and then I'm going to ask Katie to come and sing while they're taking the offering. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings this morning on these tithes and offerings. Lord, and we pray for your blessing on our giving, that we would give faithfully and cheerfully. That you would make us good and faithful servants, Lord, of your creation, of all the gifts, Lord, that you've given us. And that you would guide us as we seek to use our time, our talents, and our treasure all according to your will. Lord, in your precious and holy name we pray.
Things happen. Katie, it was beautiful. I'm going to be, uh, it's in your bulletin, I'm going to preach today from 1 Peter, verses 3 uh, through 5, if you want to go ahead and, and turn your Bibles there and get ready for that. Before, if, I mentioned earlier, uh, I've been to a couple funerals this week, and um, Lisa Stevens' funeral was on Wednesday, and my good friend uh, Casey Dawson preached there from Sunrise and uh, about halfway through, well, halfway, right from the beginning, that funeral turned into a revival tent meeting. <laughs> it was amazing. And uh, it's just been that kind of week. And even in those types of issues, you know, in situations going on in all of our lives, I know that we're all dealing the great things and the very difficult things, you know. Man, when you just feel the presence of God, Right? It's incredible. A group of friends, we were with uh, Tracy Weber and Ed's father-in-law. Tracy's dad passed away unexpectedly last Sunday. And um, it was just beautiful to see folks from the church there you know, to lift them up. And you, you guys do that all the time. And thank you. And I think I'm rambling a little bit. I'm sorry. But what that all boils down to after the week I've had is I love you guys. I just, I don't say it. You know it. I'm supposed to love you. I preach it every week. But I, I, I love you. And you need to know that. We're like family. We have the same channel as this family has, right? We kind of bump elbows. But I love you. Right? And I don't... That's... If, if you don't hear anything else that I say today, I love you. So, this verse, I, I'd already intended to preach here. God had already led me here. But it kind of, as, as we, as I said about working through this message, it was one of those weeks where I wrote a message in an outline and God said, nope. <laughs> as I start working, it just turned into something completely different because of the Spirit. So, you know, last week we talked about Jesus' declaration to Thomas, right? When Thomas was asking questions of, of Jesus about where he was going to go. We don't know where you're going. And, and in John 14, 6, Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The truth, right? That is the paramount, fundamental truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is, it's right there. He is the way, the only way. There's only one way. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's what we talked about last week. That's what sets Christianity apart. That's what sets Christians apart. It's what sets us as believers apart from the world, apart from other religions, a part of this current popular culture idea that, that of pluralism, that it's all the same. It's not. We're not the same. Jesus is the way, the only way. And no one comes to the Father except through him. You won't hear that in any other religion. A great, uh, one of my favorite Christian artists of all time, Keith Green, was unfortunately um, taken early in a plane crash in the early 80s. But I caught... Just a random interview that he gave. As he was part of probably, at that time, he was probably part of the Jesus movement that you guys saw the movie. He was probably that time frame. And he was talking about how he explored all these ideas. And they were asking him, how did you land on Christianity? And he said, he said, every religion acknowledges who Christ is, that he existed. And then Christ was the only one in any religion who said, I am the way. And he said, so I kind of thought I should pay attention to that dude. If you recall, I mentioned last week how Jesus would often lead others to their own understanding of his truth. 
Um, and he would teach them by answering their questions with questions. And although uh, he certainly didn't do that when Thomas asked the question, he told him directly, right? I am the way. No one comes to the Father except through me. But I ended the sermon last week with what I believe, what I felt, is one of the most important questions Jesus ever asked. In Mark chapter 8, Jesus, again, was preaching to the disciples. They were traveling through the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked them who the people said he was. And they answered, they think you're John the Baptist. They think you're Elijah. They think you're one of the old prophets. And Jesus looks at them and he asks this amazing question. Who do you say I am? And I ended last week intentionally with that because I wanted you to think about that question. Who do you say he is? I ended there. This morning I want to continue from there. Here's, here's the entire verse, Mark 28. I'm sorry, Mark 8, verse 29. He said to them, he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Who do you think he is? Turn with me this morning to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Read along. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. For you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless the reading of your word. And I pray that you would bless the ears, Lord, and the hearts that need to hear it. I let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So before I unpack this amazing scripture, I want you to think about something. Just a moment ago, in, this, in the story in Mark, when Jesus asked his apostles, but who do you say I am? Who answered him? Peter. Peter answered him. And what did Peter say? You are the Christ. The Christ. The Messiah. The Son of God. Peter. Peter said this. The same Peter who boasted, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. That Peter. Peter said, said this. The same Peter who said, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. That, that same Peter. The same Peter who denied Jesus Christ three times just as Christ said he would. Peter witnessed, witnessed the suffering of Christ. Not only did he witness the suffering that others inflicted on Christ, he witnessed with his own eyes the suffering that his own denials caused Jesus, his Savior, his friend, so as we read these verses today, you know, Peter was well equipped. He was qualified to write these verses. The disposition that he would have from this experience. You know, he was well qualified to write this entire letter to, to those, to anyone whose faith was being tried in so many different ways. You know, 
He's writing to all of these believers who had fled from Jerusalem after Stephen was martyred. Hey, they're killing Christians. Let's get out of town. Right? And they fled to all the churches in Asia Minor. They fled back to their home countries. And, and churches started to pop up there. And now it's, it's 30 years later. And Peter's writing to them to encourage them in the face of just overwhelming persecution from Rome. Who better than Peter to speak to those who are struggling in their faith in the face of persecution? What can we learn from? What can we learn from Peter's experience today as we're facing persecution outside our churches, in, inside our churches, just in general. It's relatable, yes? I'm going to read it again now with that context, thinking about the fact that this is Peter, and you know what he's been through. Now listen to the words again and the promise that he's affirming. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, born again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not a living hope in the things of the world, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And, and for what? To, a, to an inheritance. Eternity, eternal life to an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and it never fades away, reserved in heaven for you. For who? For you who are kept by the power of God. Kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed to you, kept, reserved, held. Man, is there anything else you need to know? It's all right there. It's all right there. The world puts its hope in things that are temporary, things that can die, things that can be destroyed, things that decay, things that deteriorate. Peter is reminding Christians, he's reminding us today that our future is secure. It's incorruptible. It's undefiled. It's unfading. It's reserved, right? It's reserved in heaven because we have a relationship with God. It's secure. Kept by the power of God. The Greek word for kept literally translates as being garrisoned by an army. So, so, so the, the words here don't mean, you know, it's just sitting on a shelf waiting for you to get there. It is kept. It is protected. It is reserved for you. Fear. That's what we're talking about in persecution. Fear. Fear leads us to faith. Our faith leads us to hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Paul said it this way. We've heard this. Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, this is how, how Paul said it. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope doesn't disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. In his great mercy, God has given us new birth, begotten again into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and into an inheritance that can never perish. talked about the world, worldly hope. You know, it's just wishful thinking. Worldly hope ends at the grave. It's temporary. 
Christian hope is based on a person. It's based on the living, resurrected Christ. Because Jesus overcame the grave. Because he overcame death, he promises those who follow him that they will also overcome death. For God so loved the world, right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This assurance, this promise is so solid, it's so firm that every single Christian can stake their lives on it. You can stake your life. How? It tells us, the scripture tells us how, through faith. You who are kept by the power of God through faith. By God's power. Whosoever, right? Whosoever believes. There are two sides to our perseverance as Christians. We are, we're shielded by God's power and then by our own faith, by our own belief in him. That's how. And for what? Why are we kept? What's kept? We are kept for salvation. For salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The Bible speaks in total, the Bible speaks about salvation really in three ways. In the past, right? When a, first, a person first believes, it talks about salvation in the present. The continuing process of becoming like Christ, right? Sanctifying, sanctification, becoming like him. It talks about salvation in the future, Salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. When Christ returns. When salvation and sanctification, when it's complete through our glorification, you have arrived. Here is your room. It's been kept for you. Fear can lead us to faith. Faith will lead us to hope. And our hope is in the good news of Jesus Christ. So, what are you afraid of? What's your fear? What is it? We've talked about the job description for four, five months. You've heard it previously, right? Love God. Love each other as I loved you, right? Love each other as you love yourself. Go, make, baptize, and teach. So what are you afraid of? We all have fears. We all have reasons. I know, you know some of you aren't comfortable talking in front of people. That's all right. But what's holding you back? Either from a decision to submit and follow Christ or to serve him and follow his will for you. We all battle fear. We all battle self-doubt. I'm not good enough, I'm not equipped, I'm not ready. Somewhere in our thinking, in our self-talk, we have to let God into the equation. We have to allow him into the decision process. There has to be a reason that the Bible tells us almost 365 times, fear not. I think God knows us that well. He loves us that much. He knows us so well that 365 times he says, Fear not. He knew that we would all wrestle with fear and doubt and worry. Fear and self-doubt and fear. The, the devil's greatest tools. The, the devil's greatest weapons. Martin Luther uh, made an interesting observation in, in his table talk. It says, God and the devil... Take opposite tactics regarding fear. The Lord first allows us to become afraid that he might relieve our fears and comfort us so that we know we need God.
God. So that we know he is God and that we need him. The devil, on the other hand, first makes us feel so secure in our own pride, in our own sin, that we then become overwhelmed with self-doubt and despair and fear. And we never turn to God. He went on and said it this way, in a, in a, knowing Martin Luther, this is probably a, a hymn quote. He wrote so many. It says, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. That kind of sums it up. We have to move from fear to faith. Fear leads us to faith. Faith leads us to hope. And our hope is in the good news of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm going to give you four simple principles. I'm not going to talk on them or expound on them. I'm going to give you these four simple principles to help you move from faith, from fear to faith. First, faith focuses on God, not your problems. I promised I wouldn't expand. Faith focuses on God, not your problems. Number two, faith trusts in God's timing, not your own. That one has an asterisk beside it and has my name written in the margin. Pray every day for me for that. Faith grows by believing God despite your circumstances, right? I just, I just have to. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is perfected in your weakness, okay? Faith grows by believing God despite your circumstances. Number four, faith trusts and obeys God. Dr. McCloy preached to you about this a few weeks ago. Faith trusts and obeys God. And what was his message? Trust is the action word. Faith in action, one step at a time. Listen, everything that I've been trying to say comes down to one simple question, really. When it comes to fear, and it comes to these incredible words from Peter. The question is, can God be trusted? Do you trust him? If the answer is yes, then then we know we can face the worst that life has to throw at us. Without any fear. Blessed be the God, our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation to be revealed in the last time. What an incredible promise. What an amazing affirmation. Yes, Yes, right? God can be trusted. Amen? So trust Him. Trust God. Obey God. Submit to God's will for you. Selflessly. Sacrificially. Deny yourselves. Pick up your cross and follow Him in a spirit of unity, right? As a body of Christ, united in his love, making Jesus the priority, making him our priority. Again, not making him the first thing on the list of 10 things we're gonna do, but making him the reason that we do all 10 things. Faith can lead us, fear can lead us to faith. Faith leads us to hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Let's pray.
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for such an incredible morning of worship and praise. Lord, I thank you for the message this morning and the opportunity to serve you. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ who willingly died in our place, Lord, for our sins and rose from the grave, overcoming death so that by believing in him, we could be with him for eternity. Lord, I thank you for that truth. Who do we say you are, Lord? You are the Christ. We pray this morning seeking you and asking you to guide us, to keep us in that truth. Lord, to keep us in your truth so that we can hold firmly to your will for us right here, right now. As we face fears and self-doubts, everything that Satan has to throw at us, fears that distract us, fears that paralyze us, that make us apathetic, fears that divide us and prevent us from doing what you commanded us to do, what you will us to do, Lord, to love you, to love each other, to share your truth with others, to serve in that loving witness of unity and love. Lord, remind those, all of us, and everyone who doesn't know you, that through your mercy they can be born again to a living hope through you, Lord, through your resurrection and through your power to an inheritance that cannot be lost, Lord, that's kept in reserve for us. If you're present today, if you're listening to me online and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray right now that you would ask him into your heart. If you know him as Lord and Savior and you're not in the walk with him that you need to be in, and you need to come alongside, he's never moved from you. He's right there. I pray that you would go to him. If you're looking for a church family where you can serve and be a part of a united body of Christ, trying to grow and serve and be more like you. Lord, I pray that they would make a decision to be a part of this church family. Lord, lead them where you need them to be. Lord, I thank you for our mothers. Again, those that are here and those that are with you. In the way that you grew us, edified us through them and through their love for us. Lord, we thank you. We rejoice always. We pray without ceasing, Lord. And we give you thanks in everything. And everything for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I find it interesting that uh, God gave us a Fear not for every day of the year. Uh, I've no. Please stand and join me in singing our hymn dedication. Blessed assurance.
Praise God. What a joyful noise this morning. Uh, great worship. This is our story, right? This is our song. What a great promise in the message today. An inheritance saved and kept by the power of God through your faith. Take that with you today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day, this opportunity to worship you this morning together as a church family. I pray that you'll be with each person as they go. Bless the celebrations and the time together with moms. Lord, it be filled with joy and happiness. We thank you. We love you. And we give you all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.